Somebody once asked me, how do you get into prog rock music? Now, if you're not familiar with prog rock, it's kind of like, um, consider it as artsy rock music. It's always been billed as the thinking person's music, and, you know, don't let that put you off. Um, that's mainly a way to gatekeep it, I've found, and, and you know, you, oh, you don't listen to prog, that means I'm above you, that sort of thing. Some prog rock fans tend to have a bit of a superiority complex, but really, just like any music, it's for everyone. You don't have to enjoy it, but it's there if you want to. So, I had a think about this, and... If you have a, if you're generally au fait with uh, sort of music, particularly rock music, but you want to dip your toes into prog rock a little bit, then I'm going to suggest the Rush album, Signals. Now, if you watched yesterday's top five, then you'll know that I don't consider Signals to be the best Rush album, but that's just my opinion. Um, What it is, is just a solid rock album it's got some really good tunes on it and the sort of music that you will probably enjoy even if you're not interested in the prog aspect but it also um rush tends to have some very deep meaning to the songs and uh that's kind of a staple of prog in general so i'd say that's a really good one to start with uh, very very popular and very um Well, I call it Solid Gold, just because every track on it is great, and it's got a good variety to it as well. There's some sort of faster tracks, there's some slower tracks, there's a beautiful track at the end called Losing It, which, uh, yeah, if you're not prepared for it, then it can can do some emotional damage, (laughs) to put it that way. Maybe not damage, but you know what I mean. Um, So, yes, if you're wanting to try Prog out, go for Signals. Um, If you're not a... Especially familiar with rock music, but you still want to uh, give the old prog a bit of a go. I would probably say, um, just trying to think, probably, yeah, uh, it might be a bit of a controversial choice, but In Through the Outdoor by Led Zeppelin. Now, it's mostly your typical Zeppelin fair, latter day, it has to be said. So it's not quite as uh, traditionally rocky as the likes of Two or the Untitled Fourth Album. But it has a particular song on it that, um, well, the thing is with prog rock, it's not only known for its sort of deep, meaningful lyrics and artsy music, it's also known for timing changes in the middle of a song um, and length of song you if you're getting into prog and you and you're looking at all these prog albums you may well be put off by the fact that you come across songs that are 20 minutes long and that's pretty standard some prog songs are like an entire album's worth that are only split in two because you know you've got two sides of an album so you're talking about a single 45 minute piece of music and that's not for everybody but some of the slightly less lengthy but still relatively lengthy tracks you know you kind of have to get used to them if you're going to get into prog and so there's a track on in through the outdoor it's called carousel Ambra. it's i think it's about 10 minutes long it's maybe slightly longer it's got the timing changes it's got a bit of a proggy sound um it's not really prog but it's it's got some of the hallmarks and so it's a really nice way to uh start your journey i would have said If you want to jump into the deep end, though, you see, there's a lot of prog music that is... Well, the thing with Signals and the thing with, um, well, In Through the Outdoor, as I've mentioned, very accessible, I think. Um, Signals particularly. Like I said, even if you're not interested in the prog aspect, you'll probably find something to enjoy there. But not a lot of prog... Not all prog is like that. I'm not going to say not a lot of prog because, you know... Depends what you get out of it. But there is a lot of prog that is very... It's very hard to listen to. Quite a bit of the early Genesis music is a bit like that. You know, there's um, there's an album called... Uh, what's it called now? Foxtrot. Foxtrot. And there's some great songs on there. There's... Um, I can't remember the name of the track. It's Dance of the Moonlit Night or something like that. And that's a really good track. Quality, it's got the, t- it's got, it's a very proggy track, and again, quite accessible. Um, but then it's got a track called "Supper's Ready," and it's fifteen minutes, and 
they make the point that they want to make in about three. And this is one of the troubles that you might come across is the fact that um, as Lester Bangs said in Almost Famous, it takes them 45 minutes, it might not be the exact quote, I'm paraphrasing here, but it takes them 45 minutes to say what the box tops said in two minutes. I'm not saying that it's not worth listening to some of the lengthier tracks, but sometimes when they have got a point, as is the case with a lot of prog music, they don't get to the point. Or sometimes they do get to the point and then there's a whole rest of the song and you just think, alright, okay, I'm done with it now. Okay, I'm done with it now. Um, one of the One of the best examples for me, actually, is... Uh, a track by Emerson, Lake and Palmer called Fanfare for the Common Man. Quite popular, quite famous, um, and if you were to listen to it, you might recognise it. But the thing is, the version everybody knows is the single version, which is three minutes long, naturally. If you listen to the full-length version, you get to the end of the three minutes, and then it just keeps going and going. <sighs> And it, yeah, it, it, <laughs> you get fed up of it. And there's a reason why the single version is the more popular version, because it's, it's the bit of the song that's actually good. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. So, my point was, if you're looking to dive into the deep end, and you're looking to get into a proper bit of prog music, and you, you want to you wanna experience what progressive rock can be, but you still want to listen to a quality piece of music, well, I'm going to say look no further than Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick. It's a absolutely brilliant album. The, the um, One of the perhaps best parts of it, I'm, there's a word I'm thinking of, and it's uh, not forthcoming, but um, one of the positives, shall we say, of the album is the fact that it is completely meaningless on purpose. The album is supposed to be a jab at the the 45-minute progressive rock uh, <laughs> standard, you know. Uh, I think at the time people were saying, oh, Jethro Tull, oh, Aqualung, the, the album at the time that was... Well, their current album at the time, people were... The, the critics were saying, oh, it's a great concept album, this. I'll go into that in just a second. And uh, so Ian Anderson, the front man of Jethro Tull, was like, oh, they want a concept album, do they? Well, I'll give them a concept album. And they produced this 45-minute load of nonsense. And it is glorious. It's if you, if you take it as just being the music, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it's very, very proggy. And it's got some weird bits in it, and it makes no sense sometimes. And it's chaotic, and it's great. So... That's your deep end pick. If you're looking for a deep end pick that does have some meaning to it and something that you'd like to perhaps turn over in your mind and, and try and decipher the deeper meaning to, then I've got another tall one for you. It's another 45 minute one. It's another concept album. Passion Play. I love that album. Um, it's a bit of an acquired taste, but prog rock is, so give it a go. Um, on the topic of concept albums, that is definitely a concept within progressive rock and it effectively means a whole album that's got a unifying theme to it so um what's a good example uh well quadrophenia by the who is a fantastic example of that it's kind of a rock opera in a way um and all of the songs are they sort of tell a story across the whole album, and so that is considered a concept album because the album is based around a single concept. Makes sense, huh? Similar, um, the Alan Parsons Project, Turn of a Friendly Card, that's all about gambling, um, and what you lose from gambling, that's got a good, a quite, quite a good, I think it's about 12 minutes, 15 minutes, um, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, but anyway, if you're, if you're doing research into prog, expect to come across the concept album. And be aware that concept album tends to not be the sort of thing you can listen to individually because it's 
a lot of it, particularly uh, The Wall by Pink Floyd, it's getting into musical territory and you kind of, it needs, each individual track needs the context of the tracks around it to make sense. Um, and many, many tracks, they sort of, they end, but they don't actually end because they flow into the next track and so you kind of have to listen to them both back to back. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, and it stems from when records you had to just listen to the whole record all the way through. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's uh, that's my uh, progressive rock primer. I've got a few other suggestions should you wish to hear them, but uh, I won't bore you too much about it. Uh, so yes, that's all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.